Hello guys and welcome back to Bright Founders Talk by Temi. It's Matt here, your host for today, and we are joined by our next guest, Matteo, CEO and co-founder of Vice Versa. Uh, Matteo, hello. How are you doing today? Hi. Hi, Matt. Uh, very good. Thank you. Good. Happy to be here. Likewise, likewise. So uh, tell me, Matteo, five-time founder. Yeah, five-time founder, if I'm correct, if my uh, statistics are right here. What uh, has, just to get to know you a little bit more before we go into the world or vice versa, what does it take to be a five-time founder? What kind of do you have to find within you to be that person where you can keep on um, being a founder? Can anyone, or do you have to have a certain kind of quality? I don't know. Actually, since I dropped the university, I've always tried to work on my stuff. Uh, Personally, there's a big difference uh, that I experienced uh, between uh, a more lifestyle company uh, than uh, a, uh, a startup, uh, which involves innovation, uh, in, uh, involves uh, scalability of your project. Uh, so I think uh, the main uh, difference, uh, it's related to the kind of project uh, that you want uh, that you want to 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 run. Um, in my case, uh, <clears throat> the previous project that, that I ran was all uh, uh, very like uh, 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 traditional businesses. I mean, uh, I worked, uh, manage a, a, a marketing agency. I manage um, uh, a more uh, traditional uh, traditional business, and then. Uh, I arrived uh, in the fintech uh, sector, uh, starting uh, a crowdfunded platform, uh, which at the end of the day was my first touch point uh, with innovation uh, and startup ecosystem. And it was 2012. Um, and there I decided uh, to start Vice Versa um, as an scalable company. So uh, everything was set up in a different way. And uh, uh, it takes uh, a very different approach uh, to start uh, these kind of companies. I think the uh, uh, the consciousness about uh, the uh, potential challenge when you're going to build a scalable company it's mm -hmm. uh, what makes the difference uh, uh, to get started. Uh, yeah. The consciousness, so mm -hmm. the awareness about uh, what you're doing uh, in reality. Uh, because it's not that kind of business that maybe your father uh, was running or that uh, your family was running, uh, et cetera. Okay, very nice. Um, what then was the inspiration for this, Matteo? What was the inspiration for you to launch Vice Versa? And how does your platform differ from any of the other platforms out there? Well, I think uh, that uh, it was... Uh, well, the idea of Vice Versa born in, uh, during the pandemic. So it was uh, close to the end of 2020. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that back then, uh, some other companies uh, or founders uh, around the world uh, realized that there were a better uh, way to uh, provide financing specifically for e-commerce companies. So when we put uh, together Vice Versa, basically there was just one player uh, that was uh, ClearCo. And then suddenly uh, some other companies popping up uh, like uh, Wayflyer, uh, Uncapped. Uh, and this probably was because uh, at the same time uh, we were kind of experiencing uh, the same uh, issues. Now I, I studied the, the background uh, of the founders of these companies and all of us are coming uh, from uh, in one way or the other financing uh, startups. And uh, I think uh, revenue-based financing uh, is the sort of uh, evolution, not uh, the data-driven uh, way of providing financing uh, to uh, to company to digital companies to startups. Um, so it was more than uh, an idea; it, it was uh, a natural evolution. Mm -hmm. With with this, then obviously you were saying that at the beginning there was only one other company when you were starting out. Have you found it to be more difficult now that there are more companies doing it, or was it easier when there were? Was it easier when there was just one, or has that competition now spurred you to move you faster in what you're doing? Absolutely, competition helps uh, market uh, improvements uh, in in general. Uh, so, from uh, uh, 
an awareness point of view. So mm -hmm. more people now know what's revenue-based financing, uh, and uh, it's also thanks uh, to competitors that uh, are uh, communicating uh, these uh, in their countries, uh, etc. In, the, in the markets they are, uh, and the investment they are doing uh, in building this uh, awareness around the product, uh, but also in terms of efficiency, you know, because the uh, platforms uh, will uh, always try to differentiate themselves and to offer something better for the customer. So um, or competition is always good for the market. So how does your company now, how does Vice Versa differ to what it was going to be at the beginning? The plan you had in mind, what kind of pivots have you had to take because of the competition? Um, more than because of the competition, I think because of the uh, oh. customer feedbacks uh, that we received, um, especially from the beginning. Uh, well, the beginning was kind of more complex uh, idea than uh, what is uh, actual uh, uh, became. Um, nowadays, uh, we are sure that we are addressing uh, a very a uh, clear pro uh, problem that uh, digital companies have, which is uh, funding, non dilutive uh, solution. The other big lag uh, we have uh, been investing uh, is uh, the uh, uh, data-driven insight uh, that we provide uh, because we believe uh, that uh, uh, the companies uh, need uh, to uh, have uh, more knowledge about uh, how their business is going. And I think uh, that this second part is also one of the main uh, differentiation points uh, uh, we have uh, with some of the competitors. Of course, other competitors are also um, investing uh, in this area. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, that uh, is more related uh, to the uh, customer uh, uh, customer feedbacks than uh, the competition. Uh, the, 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 the drivers... Uh, for our change in the product uh, in, and the, the value proposition are mostly driven uh, by, by the customers. Uh -huh. Okay, so you talked there about your data-driven approach, yeah? So you've got your data-driven approach and your revenue-based financial model. How does that help your business grow? Well, from uh, a funding perspective, uh, uh, of course, uh, can provide the uh, capital which uh, uh, only maybe the venture capital uh, a venture capital fund can provide because a traditional bank will never have uh, the same uh, risk appetite uh, than uh, what we have uh, in terms of uh, amount of capital but also understanding uh, of the metrics of the business now if you go to a bank and uh, you start talking about uh, customer acquisition cost or uh, uh, return on advertising spend, uh, obviously uh, the bank uh, will, uh, will not change uh, their mind uh, uh, in allowing you uh, a loan now. Uh, they don't really care about this kind of metrics, which is something that uh, usually an investor cares a lot uh, because uh, you can uh, uh, build uh, some sort of uh, forecasting. Um, so I believe that Revenue-based financing solution can fit in the middle uh, and can take uh, uh, better decisions thanks to this uh, data-driven approach. Uh, and uh, the customers at the end will receive uh, bigger funding, uh, but uh, without uh, having uh, uh, to deal with uh, uh, their uh, shares in the company and uh, without uh, having to uh, give out uh, uh, guarantees, uh, etc. So this is the first contribution that we give uh, to customer growth. The other contribution is the insights, the dashboard, because uh, also putting together many different data sets uh, and uh, uh, getting a clear uh, uh, view of the relevant metrics, uh, it's not something that uh, is always easy to do. Uh, uh, companies, need to put together different dashboards with different tools uh, uh, or pay uh, amount of money uh, for having uh, this data all together. Um, instead, we provide them uh, uh, included uh, in, uh, uh, in the funding, uh, uh, this kind of insights. And we are investing more and more because uh, we are also 
uh, 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 building uh, new insights and new data, also thanks to the exposure that we have uh, to the competition uh, and to uh, and to other players. Uh, so we are now able to also uh, build uh, more uh, uh, more uh, uh, smart insights uh, than uh, what uh, you can do at the company level. I, I don't want to spoil it too much, but uh, I think that uh, as but also other players will work a lot uh, on these uh, insight uh, uh, machines. But let's go on to the tech challenges, which all of this uh, comes up with. So how are you ensuring that the platform scalability as the number of the digital companies, your services, uh, using your services grows? How do you deal with the potential um, infrastructure challenges to it? Oh, well, this is a good question. Uh, we are always uh, like challenging ourselves uh, in uh, what is the best way mm. uh, to build uh, the infrastructure. And eventually we uh, change it at least three times uh, uh, since the beginning. Of course, uh, the first MVP was a very like, uh, 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 basic uh, WordPress uh, uh, with uh, some uh, uh, custom uh, uh, code. Uh, then we move into a more uh, 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 like uh, an application that was uh, more uh, more scalable, but uh, that reached faster uh, the, the their limits. Uh, and now we have uh, a, a more scalable infrastructure, but we are also uh, challenging ourselves uh, with all the uh, machine learning uh, uh, and uh, AI capabilities uh, that an infrastructure now needs. Um, so. I don't know. It's an everyday, uh, an everyday challenge. Tell me about uh, this. So you talk, you spoke there about the MVP, yeah, and you've had obviously kind of the three big changes since then, and many pivots. But um, I've heard lots from a lot of the uh, CEOs that I've interviewed that if you're not putting out an MVP that you're not ashamed of. <laughs> then you're probably taking too long to go to market. Do you believe in that too? How was yours? Were you ashamed of yours at all? Um, or uh, do you think you worked too long on before you put it out there? For uh, for a fintech company, beside of the product itself, uh, you have to put together other uh, many pieces uh, like uh, regulatory, legal, compliance. So for us, uh, the go-to-market uh, was a probably longer than a traditional startup because of these uh, additional uh, uh, additional issues mm. uh, or requirements. Uh, in terms of the product, uh, yeah, of course, uh, we were kind of uh, 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 not very happy about uh, about that, but we, we knew. The good part is that uh, one of the co-founder, it's the product, uh, uh, the head of product and also a designer so it was looking good, even if the backend uh, basically was uh, on WordPress. Uh, so yeah, we obviously knew that uh, that was a, a, a temporary solution, uh, but it worked out. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And you spoke there as well about the AI and machine learning models. Uh, how are they playing a role in vice versa's data-driven approach? Uh, we are testing uh, a lot of different uh, solutions uh, based. Uh, well, first of all, we have our own models uh, for uh -huh. um, uh, building uh, the uh, uh, scoring uh, uh, of the of the companies. Um, so once we once a company connect uh, to our platform, we download uh, a bunch of data that are collected uh, uh, in our database and uh, run uh, our models. Uh, that uh, creates uh, a forecast of the future revenues of the company, uh, given the amount of new investments uh, in specific uh, expenses. Uh, so this is the first uh, like uh, uh, machine learning model that uh, that we build, uh, and is basically a forecasting uh, a forecasting tool. Uh, now we are approaching uh, different uh, uh, different solutions. Uh, from a conversional uh, solution uh, that can provide uh, 
support in understanding uh, the data that we are showing uh, to a, uh, a more marketing related uh, solution uh, that will uh, uh, give uh, the customer an understanding of what are the channels that are performing better. Um, so marketing mix modeling, basically. I don't know if you are uh, familiar with that kind of uh, models. Uh, but yeah, this is one of the features that uh, we believe uh, will help a lot uh, the uh, our customers uh, in order to better manage uh, their uh, uh, their money. So um, vice versa has been going for almost a couple of years now. Yeah. Um, so with that, what has been the biggest AI shift since just in those two years? Has there been something significant which has happened which you've started employing? Um, in those two years, or has not much changed for for you in the two years here? Well, we have been uh, uh, growing uh, the the projects uh, in in AI. Uh, also, we all know that more technologies are becoming available. So, of course, uh, this is uh, a, a a push to uh, find uh, new solutions and find uh, uh, improvements in your in your technology. I think that uh, from two years now, uh, no software-based companies uh, can have uh, can exist uh, without uh, some AI uh, uh, experience uh, or uh, some AI uh, AI usage. Um, Mm-hmm. Okay, talk to me about the future here. We spoke a little bit about the the past. Let's go into the more present and the future here. So, um, what are you excited about with the advancement of technology? What are you looking at over the next kind of year, two years, where you're excited to start using? Well, AI is definitely super exciting. Uh, our CTO is uh, an MIT PhD. Uh, that have been working uh, a lot in uh, natural language processing uh, solutions for big banks, uh, etc. Uh, so, obviously, our uh, our own uh, uh, technology is driven uh, by this uh, uh, by this uh, flow. Another big technology uh, is going to be, especially for software and AI, uh, would be co- uh, uh, quantum computing. Uh, which maybe will not involve a lot uh, company like us, but will change a lot uh, uh, the way we are uh, uh, building uh, the models and uh, the way that uh, uh, the, the speedy that uh, the, the fastness that we can reach in developing these models. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think, think that for software-based companies, these are the biggest uh, evolutions uh, in. Uh, uh, in the future, uh, then of course there are multiple sectors that are becoming uh, super interesting, like climate uh, or uh, uh, nuclear. It's obviously following inside uh, some sort of uh, green and environment uh, uh, tech solution, and is much more uh, about building uh, big uh, plants. But uh, uh, this kind of uh, technologies are also very interesting uh, to to follow, even if it doesn't fit uh, my current uh, uh, journey. Tell me about, let's talk a little bit about your journey here, because I'm very interested in find, finding more about you here. So um, what was your, coming out of university, I'm not sure if you said that you finished university or you stopped university. I dropped it. Dropped it. So what was the kind of... Um, there's so many stories where, you know, the biggest CEOs and the biggest and most successful people in the world are those people that have dropped out of university. Um, what has been the skills that you have used the most uh, to be successful in what you're doing? Because obviously it wasn't what you were taught at university. You dropped out. What have you learned yourself, which you need to be successful? The main problem for me with university was that back then uh, I wasn't uh, uh, sure about uh, what I was doing. Uh, so I needed uh, to go out. Uh, so I start traveling uh, and I stay out of Italy for eight years. 
uh, I leave the border between uh, the US and uh, 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 and Spain. Mm-hmm. And uh, that uh, experience, so going out of the comfort zone and going out uh, uh, to discover uh, uh, the, the world uh, helped me find out uh, what was really interesting for me. Uh, and then I think that uh, curiosity and uh, resilience uh, in uh, uh, some part of the journey because it's not everything going uh, good. Uh, of course, there are uh, uh, up and downs. Uh, so being uh, able to uh, also uh, realize that these downs uh, uh, doesn't uh, mean that you're in a wrong way. Uh, you have to understand that uh, uh, everything takes time. Uh, so I think curiosity, resilience uh, are the skills uh, uh, that uh, help me most uh, during the journey. Is that something you learn, the curiosity and resilience? Is that something that you learn or something you always had? Curiosity, especially, probably I didn't know because uh, I wasn't passionate about anything <laughs> when I was at the, uni- at the university. Probably if I discovered earlier my passion, uh, I would have concluded the university now because uh, I, I think that I can demonstrate also that uh, I'm good when I found uh, an objective uh, to uh, to achieve it. Uh, so being uh, passionate about what you're doing, it's fundamental. And when you're younger, it's very difficult. Uh, so I think that curiosity was inside but they wasn't uh, able to like express it uh, or resilience as well. Probably I wasn't never in a situation uh, that uh, I needed to be resilient uh, back then. Uh, so comes out uh, with uh, the challenges and especially uh, when I uh, get out of the comfort zone. This is something uh, seems uh, very easy to understand, uh, but in reality is what makes the difference. What the switch comes a lot of times when you go out of your comfort zone. Tell me about uh, with this. Did this happen, obviously, uh, early on in your career? Or, for example, you were working 10 years in your previous company, I believe at 200. Yeah, 10 years you... Um, yeah, got... eight years or something, yeah. Eight, 10 years, nice, okay. What um, did you learn from fi- founding that company to bring it into what you're doing at Vice Versa? What did better question? What do you know now which you didn't know then? But a lot of a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I still I'm still learning a lot uh, right now. So uh, I don't know what really. I think that I'm more aware of what uh, what they said before. What building a scalable company really means. When I started uh, uh, 200, uh, I was in 2012, in Italy, there was basically no startup ecosystem. Uh, I was just uh, coming back uh, from uh, uh, from Spain uh, when I lived for eight years. So I got also to reconnect a lot to my network. Uh, uh, so back then, uh, when I started, I think that uh, Starting uh, 200 uh, in a scalable way was possible. Uh, but now I think that uh, I'm very aware of what does it mean. Uh, back then, I was completely uh, unaware. And unfortunately, I couldn't really um, uh, find also investors or partners uh, that helped me discover that uh, earlier. Because I think all so another point, uh, when you build your company in a uh, mature ecosystem is that you learn faster um, and you could address potential issues uh, or you uh, will understand if your business can go or not uh, in uh, uh, less time. Uh, and this is another very important uh, uh, thing to consider when you want to run uh, a scalable company. Uh, depending on where you are, also can make the difference. Uh-huh. Interesting. Um, tell me a little bit about that. What do you mean? So depending on what kind of country you are, has different regulations, uh, different rules, is that what you mean? There could be many, uh, uh, many reasons by which 
building a, a company in one country or the other it's uh is different uh, but especially uh, the discussions uh, that you have uh, uh, with people that uh, is feeling uh, the same uh, uh, that you're feeling right now in italy there is a growing ecosystem and now i have uh, more and more discussions about uh, building a scalable company uh, back then uh, the discussion was uh, with nobody uh, the <laughs> There was nobody building uh, this kind of companies. Uh, so you couldn't really realize if you're doing wrong uh, or right. Maybe in another country, in a more mature ecosystem, uh, uh, even in 2012, uh, uh, there could be a, a potential uh, discussion with someone that already did uh, uh, that, uh, that journey and uh, can, uh, can help, can mentor on uh, how to do it uh, or how to fail it uh, uh, faster. Um, and this is something that uh, it's very important, I, I think. You talked there about failure. Tell me, I want to know your biggest, let's say, failure um, in your career. What has been your biggest failure and how did you overcome it? Because obviously you've overcome it to get where you are now. What was that and how did you um, deal with it? I couldn't say that a real failure uh, uh, really happened until uh, until now, but of course it's a, 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 a learning experience. Uh, before 200, I, I, I uh, founded uh, a marketing agency uh, that evolved during uh, during the years. And uh, uh, for example, that uh, uh, that entrepreneur uh, entrepreneurial activity that I did uh, wasn't absolutely uh, connected uh, to uh, anything uh, uh, that uh, the venture capital industry or uh, so it wasn't really uh, easy to fail back then now so mm -hmm. that experience uh, wasn't potentially coming to an end uh, never because uh, it was a company that was running on its own money uh, running on its own uh, uh, basically myself uh, and uh, uh, my girlfriend. So uh, it's the kind of uh, activity business uh, that uh, uh, you can do for your entire life um, because it's based on your skills, it's based uh, on what you uh, what you can do for the customers, uh, et cetera. When the company grows and uh, becomes uh, uh, also a matter of process, uh, procedures, uh, uh, a lot of things that are building uh, the right uh, 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 the right portion to 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 keep the company alive. It's way easier to fail. Uh, uh, so what uh, I think is that uh, also listening to um, other people' uh, uh, experiences, uh, trying to uh, tackle these. Uh, uh, things uh, that makes the company alive uh, is the uh, receiver to try to not fail uh, uh, in the future. But even small failure, like not having uh, hired the, the right person uh, or uh, having lost uh, the right person uh, because uh, you made a mistake, these also these uh, small failures can uh, uh, ending up uh, with a bigger with a bigger failure. So. If in the process you're trying to tackle these uh, these things, um, you try to not reach uh, the the final uh, the final failure. Interesting. It is sometimes the smallest failure can have such a catastrophic um, kind of consequence to a company. Tell me uh, last two questions for you here. So, um, in regards to um advice that you can give other people so you uh started kind of your career more in marketing and then you went into the fintech space what advice can you give to those that are in marketing now looking to go into the world of tech fintech specifically what do they need to know which would have been helpful for you to know when you started out when i started the, my marketing agency facebook wasn't there first of all <laughs> uh, so uh that was uh a very good time uh, to learn uh, a lot of digital skills uh, uh, that now are becoming like uh, commodized. Uh, uh, uh. So right now, if, if you want to start uh, anything in marketing, uh, you should uh, 
have uh, a completely data-driven approach. This is something uh, that I would suggest uh, to anyone that uh, is diving into marketing right now. Uh, to Obviously, it's important what you learn in the university about marketing and about uh, uh, communication and strategy, etc. But nowadays, it's all about uh, the, the, the reality is that the outcome of a marketing strategy is all about uh, how you're able to manage data. Um, so try to like uh, 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 get closer to people that is good uh, in uh, data analysis, data science, uh, uh, or even yourself uh, try to have uh, this marketing curiosity, but uh, with uh, uh, data science capabilities. Because if you are able to manage the data, you can become a really good marketer right now. Otherwise, it's becoming uh, tough. It's all about those that you can surround yourself with uh, as well, isn't it? Um, okay, and the last question for you, Matteo, is uh, in regards to this year, obviously halfway through the year now, what have you not achieved at Vice Versa, which you want to achieve by the end of this year, which you are determined to achieve by the end of the year? What is that? Oh, well, uh, I would say that uh, funding uh, is always uh, something that you uh, expect to do uh, earlier and then uh, will be postponed. Uh, there are also some uh, small achievements uh, in uh, in the team uh, that uh, uh, we maybe plan to do earlier, but uh, we understood that uh, uh, takes longer, uh, uh, like uh, give, giving more responsibilities to certain people uh, or uh, making growth uh, certain part of the team uh, uh, autonomously. Uh, these uh, are the things that uh, you try to achieve earlier, uh, but uh, you then understand that it requires uh, more and more time. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, that uh, this can be anticipated the expectation that we had uh, and we couldn't uh, uh, really achieve uh, until now. Very nice. Matteo, it's been a pleasure to pick your brain and everything about vice versa. Thank you very much for coming on for Bright Founders Talk. Um, and uh, we hope to be in contact and to speak to you again, hopefully in the near future. Thank you, Matt. It's been a pleasure.